Hello fellow bookworms and film fans, welcome to this month's episode of the Book to Film Adaptation. We will be looking at Inkheart, written by Cornelia Funk, or Funke, depending on how you want to pronounce her surname. Um, it was published in 2003, it was then adapted to screen in 2008. We'll be looking at three things as we always do, how good is the film, how good is the book, and how well does the film take from the book. So first of all we will discuss the film and the book, and then we will discuss the plot afterwards, and then there will be spoilers when we're discussing the plot. So, the film. Now, it stars Brendan Fraser. Oh, Mr. Fraser, you are brilliant. I love him. Like, honestly, I know the Renaissance is on everybody and everybody's sort of like now rediscovering his films, but I love him in like The Mummy. I love him in in this. And it's also obviously, you know, it's, it's just got a great cast. It's got Andy Serkis in it. It's got Helen Mirren in it. You know, it's just, it, it, it's just a really, really, really good cast. Um, and honestly, as a as a, like an adventure magical film, so basically it follows. You've got Mo and Maggie, um, and Mo has the nickname Silver Tongue because years ago when Maggie was like two, three years old, he read these characters out of the book Ink Heart. Uh, so he read out Capricorn, uh, Dustfinger, and Basta, and he read them out. But Maggie's mom ended up going into the book, so he spent years trying to find a good copy of the book to try and get her back out again. But he also doesn't read it; he, he hasn't read from a book again in forever, like ever. Um, Dustfinger then kind of catches up to him, betrays him to Capricorn, and then Eleanor, Aunt Eleanor, gets kind of drawn into it, and they go on like these crazy adventures. They, you know. They, they they meet the author um you know and and then they realize that Maggie has the same gift to be able to sort of like read these characters out of books and it's just a really good family film like it's got action it's got adventure it's got magic it's got mystery it's got little fairies at one point like do you know what I mean it's just I really enjoyed it and when I first watched it all those years ago I didn't like it as much because I remember reading the like just kind of rereading the book and then watching it and going this isn't this isn't that close um and then somehow when I've like redone it again for this channel uh, and I rewatched the film and I've reread the book and I've gone actually it's a lot closer than I thought but anyway and it was just it's just a really good film and honestly I keep going back and watching it and I just I love it I do I, but I love Brendan Fraser like honestly I, I mean I'm sure there are bad films out there with Brendan Fraser in it but I have yet to watch one <laughs> um but yeah so the film itself for me gets a 9 out of 10. uh there are instances where i'm kind of a little bit like okay um but you've got to suspend your disbelief at some point and it is just a really enjoyable film so i would definitely say if you can rent it buy it watch it if you can but it is it is just a it's just a nice family film do you know what i mean and and like you can easily re-watch it and you can watch it on your own you can watch it with a hot chocolate you know whatever takes your fancy so let's go to the book. So this book, I originally read this book because I borrowed it from my library at secondary school. Um, and then I loved it so much, I bought not only that one, but I also brought, bought, sorry, the second and third one as well. So it is a trilogy. Um, and honestly, I wanted the gift that Silvertongue had every single time I read it. Because like, on, like when I read it and I delved into this world, and even though, it's kind of set in our world at first. Well, at first, the whole first book is set in our world. The second two books, now that's something else. But, so the first book um, that's set kind of like in our world, and it follows Mo and it follows Maggie, and they're big book lovers, and when they go to Aunt Eleanor, and Eleanor has this massive library with like rare editions and stuff that she, and as you can see by my many, many books, that suits me fine. I love, I love it. I love, you know, like breaking open, well not breaking a book, but opening a book. And like the whole thing of the book, like the ability to be able to read someone out of a story, I really wanted that ability. Like the characters are really personable, like you don't, obviously the villains are, are proper villains, like they, they are kind of, you sit there and go, well, no. Um, but it's just like the little twists and turns and, 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 w and when they meet the author in the book, you know, it's just because they say something like you'd imagine authors of of, of great books um, to be long dead and buried. And that's true. You honestly do. Like sometimes you read a book and go, oh, well, this is a really interesting book. I love it. But the author's probably long dead. And then you Google and research and go, I actually know they're still alive. But 
it was just a really good book i couldn't put it down i loved it every time i reread it i just get drawn into it again i mean my copy's getting a little bit kind of battered a little bit and i try and take as good care as i can but honestly every time i crack this book open i do it in a couple of days because i just can't put it down and it's just such a magical story it's such the basic plot point of what like of this guy being able to read out characters from a book and what would those characters in a book do when they're actually in this world and so I would definitely 100% this this book gets like a like a 10 out of 10 from me I loved it I I will be reviewing the other two books later on in, in this series um in this channel but honestly the first one brilliant loved it could not put it down 100% recommend you read it either borrow it from a library buy it you know you know the rules you know you know what I'm gonna say um but it's Oh, it's just so good so now let's go on to plot so if you've not read the book if you've not seen the film if you do not want this to be spoiled for you spoiler alert turn off now come back when you have done so you've got you've got you obviously your main characters and you've got so dust finger so they both start with dust finger coming to mo's house and warning him that capricorn now knows where he lives so he's on he's on the tail again so mo and meggie leave and dust finger kind of tags along uh, and the film starts almost the same way instead Mo is fixing a book somewhere else when Dustfinger finds him and then Mo and Meggie run from him not bringing Dustfinger with them now in the book they spend some time at Eleanor's house uh, and Meggie almost kind of becomes friends with Dustfinger so there's a bit more time uh, with them arriving at Eleanor's house running away from Dustfinger sorry with Dustfinger than there is in the book in the film sorry um but then in the book Capricorn's men when they do sort of like because Dustfinger obviously has betrayed Mo so when uh, Capricorn's men turn up they only take Mo and the book whereas in the film they take Eleanor and Mo and Meggie and they burn Eleanor's books oh it breaks my heart to watch that scene in the film it breaks my heart to read it when it appears later on in the book um so in the book Dustfinger has come back to uh has come back to Eleanor's because he realizes that the book that so, sorry let me try that again in the book <laughs> Dustfinger has come back to um to Eleanor's because he realizes that the book that Mo has was not ink heart so he goes back and his instructions are to bring Meggie and the book to Capricorn's village but Eleanor insists to tag along um so now in both all three are captured and we learn of what happened to Maggie's mum and why Mo is called Silvertongue. So Maggie's Mo get Maggie's mum even. God, there's so many M's. Gets read into the book. Uh, and Silvertongue, that's the nickname that he was given because he's able to read things out. Um, so he can read things out, but something must go into the book in its place. Now in both, Capricorn burns all copies of Ink Heart, um, much to this Dustfinger's horror, then gets Mo to start reading things from books to prove his gift. So he reads out gold, he reads out all sorts, and then he reads out a boy called Farid. Um, but then it is then later revealed in both that Capricorn has kept a copy of the book because he wants Mo to read out a friend. Capricorn doesn't have friends, by the way, he has an executioner, just saying. So in both, Dustfinger helps them escape because he realises that Capricorn said he could read, he could be read back in the book, but he's burned all the copies, Dustfinger doesn't know about the additional copy. So he's like, well, sod it, I'm taking your silver tongue then, and he helps Eleanor and Mo and Meggie escape. Now in the book they steal out in cover of darkness and escape in Eleanor's car. Uh, but in the film, Mo reads the tornado from Wizard of Oz and they escape among uh, they escape amongst the confusion. Now in the film, at this point, Dustfinger has met Meggie's mum, who is a maid in Capricorn's village and a mute. But he leaves her behind and sees her and leaves her behind because he knows that if Mo knows that he like his wife is alive and out of ink heart he won't help Dustfinger anymore weirdly i kind of like Dustfinger, even though he's really self-centered um <clears throat> so in both eleanor treats them all in a village uh, and then leaves to go home because she's like i've been away from home too long i've got i've got to go home so mo and meggie go and find the author in ink heart uh, of ink heart sorry um and in both we learn that Dustfinger dies at the end of Ink Heart, uh, should he return. Um and then Fangolio, who is the author, meets Dustfinger and Dustfinger then runs off because he doesn't want to meet the author, he doesn't want to know his fate. So now in the book, Eleanor has her precious books burned. Um but as I said in the film, it's already happened at this point. 
Now, in the book, Dustfinger and Farid, who, who's the boy, head back to Capricorn's village for the book uh, as Eleanor is making her way back to Mo, who goes to pick her up at the airport because obviously Eleanor doesn't want to stay in an empty house. So this leaves Fingoli and Maggie alone. Maggie alone. Now, in the film, it's Dustfinger, Farid and Mo that head off to get the book back from the village, leaving Maggie and Fengolio alone. However, in both, Fengolio and Maggie get captured by Basta and are once again taken to Capricorn's village. Now, in the film, this is when Maggie sees her mother caught in a net for trying to escape, and she knows who, now who she is, because Dustfinger has told her that her mother is alive. Um, and now in the book, we've come across Maggie's mother for the first time as Dustfinger meets her for help, where she then gets captured and Maggie then sees her hanging in the net. Um, so in both, Maggie has the same ability as her dad. In the film, she reads out Toto from The Wizard of Oz, uh, but in the book, it's Tinkerbells that she reads out. So now Capricorn's not bothered about Mo, little silver tongue. He wants Maggie to be the reader. Now, um, in both, Fengolia starts to rewrite what is going to happen when Maggie reads, so that if he reads out, the, if she reads out the shadow, it's not going to do what Capricorn thinks it's going to do. So in the book, Dustfinger escapes again, but Risa stays behind because she sees Maggie and she knows that Maggie will then be alone in the village. Now, in the film, Dustfinger, Mo, and Farid are still free, uh, and they're trying to rescue Maggie and Fengolio. Now, in the book, I know, try and keep up. In the book, Eleanor goes to the police who is working for Capricorn, who then, you know, drops, um, uh, <coughs> sorry, drops Eleanor back off in Capricorn's village, and now Eleanor is aware that Maggie's mom is alive, and it's like, oh my god, Teresa, whose name is Teresa. Um, so, in the book, the shadow is read out by Maggie, he kills Capricorn, he then dissolves into all the creatures he has killed, Basta and Magpie escape, so Magpie is um, Capricorn's mum, and all the sort of like the other people kind of just disappear into thin air. Um, but Fengolia seems to disappear into the book, um, and now the rest of the gang are stranded in Capricorn's village. In the film, when Maggie reads the shadow out, she also returns everyone back where they belong once the shadow has killed Capricorn. So her mum gets her voice back and Dustfinger misses his chance to go home, unfortunately, because he's not within sight of the book. I don't, I don't know how it works. Obviously, it's a magical thing. So the film ends with Mo reading Dustfinger back into the book and Farid, Mo and Risa, sorry, Farid, Mo, Risa and Maggie going back to Eleanor's house. The book ends with Mo, Maggie and Risa moving in with Eleanor and the leftovers from Inkheart who were saved, who were, came out of the shadow, um, with Dustfinger and Farid going off with the book to find someone else that can read them in. So as narratives go, they are quite close. Obviously, there's a lot that the film missed out because you don't want to make... I mean, films nowadays, you're looking at three three hours, you know. You know, it's very rare, it's very rare nowadays that a film's like an hour and a half. Um, I miss those days. So back then, obviously, they couldn't have everything in the book. They In the film, sorry. So a few of the larger plot points got missed. Um, and they kind of sped things up as well to have like everybody captured at once and the books burnt earlier on, on in the film. Um, and a different ending as well. So like the book ending and the film ending. So they, I think the reason they ended the film the way they did is because the book leaves it open for another story, for like a continuation of, of Dustfinger's story and his his tribulations to try and find someone that will read him back into his into his world essentially. So I think that's why the film ended the way it did but obviously the book has kept it open and I would as I said I will be rereading and um reviewing those books later on in in this channel but so overall I think the plot does get like a six out of ten I think they kept the the bare like the the bare bones of the story very close even like the little bits they kind of kept you know the the names because one thing I hate is when they change names from the book to the film for no reason whatsoever and you're literally sat there going who's this guy like, who is this guy? And then you go, oh, it's so-and-so, but they've just changed his name for no reason. Um, but yeah, so it gets a 6 out of 10 overall. But as plots go, I've I've definitely had ones where they've all they've taken is the title. So thank you for this month's book-to-film uh, adaptation that I've done. If you've got any recommendations, please leave it below in the comments, and I will get to it eventually, I promise. Uh, thank you very much for your continued support. Remember to click subscribe so you're alerted whenever a new video comes out. And remember to always keep it contento.